Hello, the Vani community. Welcome to Jorgenes again. Uh, to a Sweden that has a lot of snow and around 10 degrees cold. It's pretty okay winter weather right now. Uh, last year, uh, I think it was uh, around one year ago, uh, I did a video where I showed records that I've been culling. Uh, I have said before that I'm doing a yearly culling in the collection where I remove records that I have no longer use for, that I not listen to anymore, that I uh, realize that it wasn't all that good as I thought it was, or duplicates or something like that. Uh, and uh, in order to make way for new records that I hopefully will buy during this year. And now I have done another culling and uh, removed uh, many records from the collection and uh, I'm going to show what I've been removing uh, and uh, I'm not going to show them all because it was so many so if I'm going to show them all the video will, will probably be way too long so I have removed all this uh, at least from the when it comes to vinyl LPs full-length LPs uh, these kinds of uh, hit comp compilations and uh, Swedish records that 95% uh, of you have never heard of or something like that but but uh, still is most of the records that I'm going to remove uh, so here are the records that after this video will no longer be a part of my collection so let's start with uh, the seven inch singles uh, that will no longer be in this house uh, and uh, so pretty much so I try to take this as fast as I can uh, this is uh, Natalie Cold Wild Women Do from the Pretty Woman soundtrack uh, I don't, I, it's pretty hard to, to get rid of it right now when Natalie Cole ha has passed away and, and I think she's a great singer but uh, this one was uh, not the best song by her it's just done a lot of better songs. Uh, this is Sophie B. Hawkins with I Want You. Uh, she has done more interesting songs like uh, Damn I Wish I Was Your Lover and uh, Right Beside You. But this one was uh, pretty boring. Uh, five Star, Let Me Be The One. This is a duplicate. I have that one already. Bangles, Following. Also a duplicate that I already have. Uh, Todd Terry Project, I Just Wanna Dance. I think I showed it when I bought it a year ago and I realized that this one wasn't get, didn't get, do me anything actually. It was a lot more boring than I, than, than I thought it would be. Uh, this is a German synth pop group DAF or industry synth group with the song Brothers. Uh, this was a little too noisy for me. Uh, it was uh, uh, not I'm not into in industry synth pop like that, so I think this was not a great one. Clannad and Boner from U2 with In a Lifetime. Uh, not all that interesting. I'm not a huge fan of Clannad, so I th thought this one was pretty boring. David Cassidy, Romance, Boring, Blue Zone, uh, Thinking About His Baby. Uh, I have the album with this song on and I think that is enough because uh, this song is not near as good as Jackie was. So uh, I think I have no use for th this single. Sorry Adam, I already have a version of Express Yourself by Madonna so uh, this is duplicate that I have no use for. I also have this uh, little poster sleeve uh, that I prefer actually. Uh, this is James Ingram and Jamo Be There. Uh, that uh, I I love this song. It's a, one of the best soul songs of the 80s. But I have this one in so many versions at, on vinyl on the seven-inch single that I need needed to uh, get rid of some of them. So so uh, so um, I don't need this one. Paul Young. What? Why does a man have to be strong? Uh, duplicate. I have this one already. Uh, village people, sex over the phone. 
uh, a comeback hit for them for, from the 80s but I think this one was <laughs> very cheesy I, I think this one was uh, definitely one of the cheesiest song of the 80s and I have no use I never liked village people in any form Lee Mall don't send for me I said before that uh, I prefer Lee Mall in Kasha Gogo -Go than, than his solo works and the solo works that are his absolute best like uh, Never Ending Story and so on are produced by Georgia Moroder this one is not by Georgia Moroder and I think this one was pretty boring How Would You It? I'm for real uh, How Would You It? great singer but this one was not interesting enough to keep Heart What About Love? Duplicate I have this one already Lionel Richie, All Night Long, uh, Duplicate, I have this one already. Stephanie, Live Your Life, I think I showed when I bought this one also. Uh, I realized that uh, Stephanie, the Princess of Monaco, did some great songs with uh, one, one Love to Give and uh, Uragon, and this one was pretty uninteresting, actually. I have the albums, I prefer that. Lou Graham, Ready or Not, Duplicate, I have this one already. Denise Williams with the song uh, Special Love. Once again, Denise Williams, great singer, but this song was not interesting enough, actually. Barbara Streisand, We're Not Making Love Anymore. Uh, pretty boring ballad and, and uh, surprisingly bad for Barbara Streisand. Uh, not near as good as uh, Woman in Love or Guilty or something. Her singing, when, it, when she sings musicals. So, so uh, this is pretty boring. Russian Roulette, Come Into My Room, very unknown band, but it's produced by Paul King from the band King, and now it's a video jockey, and I thought that one would be enough to, do, to make it interesting, but it was pretty boring, actually. Squeeze, and you Get Your Gun, was pretty boring. Uh, Trance, pretty unknown soul band from the early 80s, uh, with the song Hang On, Hang On It. Uh, I had, have, had this one, actually, from... Uh, high school, I bought it in high school, so it proves that no one, no single is safe from my culling, uh, but I realized that this one is actually pretty boring, I have no use for it. Noiseworks, rock band, would take me back, boring. Sheila E, the bell of St. Mark, Sheila E has done better songs than this, so I, I have no use for this single. Maggie Riley, As Tears Go By, this one is from 1984, I like, love uh, Maggie Riley's voice, really I do, but the song itself is pretty boring. I think this one is one of the first singles that she released after uh, her uh, Moonlight Shadow with uh, Mike Oldfield. Uh, Raw Band, What Will Become of the Children. Raw Band is a one-hit wonder band who had a hit with the great song uh, Clouds Across the Moon. Uh, but this follow-up single was pretty boring. And speaking of Mike Oldfield, here he sings with Norwegian Schlager singer Anita Hegeland. Uh, you all here in Sweden remember Midsommarlov, but this one here is just an adult. Uh, prop pictures in the um, in the dark. Uh, I think this one was pretty boring, actually. I have no use for it. Oingo Boingo, uh, funk band, We Close Our Eyes. Uh, done some great songs, but this one was uninteresting. I have no use for it. Chris Norman, singer of Smokey, normally. Uh, he released some, some interesting songs. In the 80s, produced by Dieter Bohlen from Modern Talking, but he is not uh, on this single, Sarah, You Take My Breath Away. So this one is pretty boring. Modern Romance with the song Cherry Pink and Apple Blossom White. Uh, oh, classic. It's also done in Swedish version, a lot better. Uh, I think this one was pretty boring. I've never been a fan of Modern Romance, never really understood their, their music. Glenn Medeiros, what's it gonna take? And uh, I have the album with this one. I think that is enough. I think that the song itself is not interesting enough to keep the single. Michael McDonald, our love. Uh, love Michael McDonald. He's a wonderful voice, but this single was pretty uninteresting. Uh, George McRae, Rock Your Baby, uh, with a remix by Paul Hardcastle. Another uh, single that I showed when I bought it. Uh, I prefer the original Rock Your Baby. Uh, it doesn't matter if this is produced by the master himself, Paul Hotcast. I think it was pretty boring. Lover Boy, loving every minute of it. Not a fan of Lover Boy at all, and I think this one was uh, 
I always think that thought that this single is pretty damn interesting. Why I bought it is a question <laughs> for itself. Uh, Bad Habit is a rock band from the late eighties. Need somebody? Uh, boring. This one I also showed when I bought it. Art of Noise featuring the Mahlatini and the Mahotella Queens, Yebo. I realized that this one wasn't so interesting that I wanted to keep it actually. I think it, it can, I can do without it. Amazulu, Montego Bay. Uh, I think this one was... Uh, uh, Amazulu is not all that interesting with exception from the song Excitable. I think this one was pretty boring. Adamski. Uh, with Flashback Jack. I like Space Jungle and Killer, but th this uh, song is pretty uninteresting. Here is the other, another uh, version of Jamo B there that I don't need. Uh, one of many. The uh, Metal Marathon, the heavies. Uh, this is a kind of version of uh, heavy metal version of uh, those that were popular in the 80s, like uh, Stars on 45 or Jive Bunny and the uh, mix masters. Uh, they, they put some uh, uh, taken uh, some songs and put it together in one long mix. Uh, I th I'm not into heavy metal all that much, so I thought this one was pretty boring. Bronski beat. Why? Uh, I never liked uh, Jimmy Somerville's Mickey Mouse voice, uh, and uh, I think Bronski beat has done more interesting songs than this. Boy Meets Girl, famous for the song uh, Waiting for a Star to Fall. Uh, and uh, the follow-up single is pretty boring, Bring Down the Moon. I and mean, for some reason, I have a double of it uh, that are with different sleeves. And I have no use for either one of them. It's a Material had a great hit, Rhyming Away from Home, Jimmy's Tune. Uh, the other songs by this band was very uninteresting. So this other single I, I have no use for. Rebbe Jackson, one of the least famous uh, releases from the Jackson family. Uh, she's far, far, far from her brothers and sisters when it comes to quality. So I think this is no need to have it just because she's one of the Jacksons. Sam Harris have done some great songs, but I have the album and this single is pretty uninteresting. John Farnham, Break the Ice, uh, made before his famous hits. Uh, like uh, You're the Voice and then the album Whispering Jack uh, and he became better uh, years later. This song is pretty uninteresting. Everything But to Go, these early days. Uh, I've been that much fan of Everything But to Go, so I think this is pretty uninteresting. And Wang Chang, Praying to a New God. Wang Chang's earliest works, first albums, was uh, okay and um, but the songs were very very good like dance all days but this is a very late Wang Chang from 89 so I think this one was uh, the interest for the band is uh, then was pretty zero so I think it's I can do without it so let's move on to the full-length albums uh, this is Don Henley's End of Innocence I like the Eagles there are some good songs but the entire album is pretty boring, so I prefer the single End of Innocence. London Beat, In the Blood, very pretty boring album with exception from I've Been Thinking About You. This version of No Woman No Cry, I, I, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the original with by, uh, or the most famous version with by uh, uh, Bob Marley, but I must say that comparing to this person, Bob Marley is a stroke of genius, actually. I think this was a very sad version. Inker and Hamilton. This is a disc Euro dance band from Germany, produced by Michael Carito, who also produced Sandra. Uh, production is okay, but the melodies are pretty boring. Uh, so I'm no use for this album. Hot House Flowers, people. I can't imagine why I kept this one for so long. I think it's Hot House Flower. It's very, very boring band. Eurogliders, absolutely. Now I've finally given up on giving this band a chance. Uh, Eurogliders is a boring band. <coughs> Sorry. Permanently. Christopher Cross, another page. Another album that I, where I wonder why I kept it for so long. Pretty boring. Boy Meets Girl. Here we go again, Boy Meets Girl. 
Uh, this is the full-length album, just as boring as uh, Bring Down the Moon. Bruns Hornsby and the Rage, Scenes from the South Side, uh, contains, uh, that's just the way it is. Good song that is, but I have the single and the album is very, very boring, in my opinion. Cliff Richard, uh, I have two of this always guaranteed album. Uh, one that uh, is self-titled and one that is called Always Guaranteed, but they contain the same songs actually. So, uh, and uh, then also, of course, I like some people, that is a good song, but the rest of them are, are uh, not bad, but it, it's pretty uninteresting. Uh, it does many things. So, so I have no use for either one of these versions, no matter which one who is the right title. Rick Okasek with a very uh, early album, Be Beatitude. Uh, Rick Okasek is way better in the cars than it was solo. So, so I think this one was a pretty boring album, actually. The Temptations, very late Temptations, Back to Basics. Uh, I think this one didn't do me anything, actually. This is Falco with Einzelhaft. Uh, this one is containing the Del Commissar song. Uh, but the album is... It became better later on with, with the uh, later albums. This one is pretty boring. Dead or Alive. Uh, this is before their breakthrough with... Uh, Use beam around and so on. Uh, sophisticated boom boom. Uh, there was some song here that was pretty good, but but uh, that's the way I like it. Was a pretty good song here, but but uh, I think that the album itself was far from what they became later on when Stockake and Waterman took uh, care of them. So so this one was pretty uninteresting. Star Point, have you got what it takes? Uh, and uh, it was uh, not all that interesting, actually. It's also blind by. Narada Michael Walden, looking at you, looking at me. Uh, was disappointed. That Narada Michael Walden has done magnificent albums, but this was not one of them. This was uh, very uninteresting and surprisingly bad to be Narada. Fleetwood Mac, Mirage, Duplicate. I have two of it. Dizzy Gillespie. 20 golden pieces of this Gillespie. Uh, normal compilation with the songs that I have on so many albums. Uh, the most ordinary this Gillespie songs, and I have no use for another one. Elvis Presley, shockingly. Elvis sings hits from his movies, plus two recent hits. Uh, I think this one is pretty uninteresting collection, in my opinion, so I have no use for it, actually. The associates with Wild and Lonely. Uh, pretty uninteresting album that I had for a couple of years, but I, I think that I, I'm not going to listen to it anymore. I have, think it is pretty boring. Mel Torme and the Meltones uh, with Sonny Burke and his orchestra. It happened in Monterey. Uh, it wasn't all that interesting, actually. It was more or less a blind buy. I know who Mel Tromé is, but uh, it was, uh, wasn't all that interesting, that's, uh, as I thought. Uh, Quadrophonia and Cosmic Jam. This is techno trance from Belgium when, uh, from the early 90s, when that Shanger was in, in its beginning. Uh, and um, good produced by lacks of melodies. So I think it was uninteresting. Sarita... Right and uh, the spell. Uh, she's done better albums than this. This is pretty boring. Coleman Hawkins, serious. Everybody knows here at Vinyl Community that uh, I've seen my records that I love Coleman Hawkins, but this might be one of his absolute worst albums. This one is made in 1966, uh, rec uh, recorded in 1966, and I don't think it was good one bit. Uh, it, Coleman Hawkins plays, they have put on some stupid echo on Coleman Hawkins just to make it sound more uh, nightly uh, and uh, its strings and so on I, and I think this one was very boring this was definitely one of Coleman Hawkins baddest, worst albums serious, serious Mika Rikfors, Swedish rock artist that actually has been a member of the Hollies for a couple of years uh, and the album Tender Turns Tough from 1980 had some good songs, but the album itself was pretty uninteresting. 
Sydney Bichet, a giant of jazz collection called uh, 1939 to 1944. Too much Dixieland for me, and I'm not all that interested in Dixieland jazz. Once again, Adamski, uh, Dr. Adamski's musical pharmacy. As I said, he has made two songs that are actually good, but this one is, uh, the entire album is huge disappointment, very uninteresting. Uh, I showed this one before, I think, the most beautiful sounds of Christmas, and I realized that I have no use for this one. It's pretty uninteresting Christmas album. Uh, a two record set of the House Sound of London. Uh, this is house British house music that I like very much, but this contains so much remixes and uh, it's definitely a really bad compilation of, of a great channel, so I have no use for it. Uh, original motion picture soundtrack. Trust, bleh, original no motion picture soundtrack or breakdance. It's a duplicate. I have this one already. Bright lights, big city. Uh, a movie that I have never seen uh, and never seen any uh, even a sleeve of a video cassette before. Uh, contains some good songs, but I have all of these songs actually on, on the various singles and albums and the entire compilation from the motion picture I never have seen, I have no use for. Christopher Cross again, Every Turn of the World, uh, just as boring as the other one. Mink de Ville, Coupe de Grace, another album that I actually bought when I was in high school, was a blind buy at the time. Uh, and. Uh, Okay, Bruce Springsteen wannabe, but but uh, I have no use for it. Double, famous for a magnificent 80s song called The Captain of the Heart. But that one is also one of the few songs that actually are good on this song, and it's not enough to keep the album. Bronsky Beat, Truth There, Double There. This is a song where uh, Jimmy Somerville is not singing, actually. Uh, only album that they did without Jimmy Somerville. Uh, but uh, and there's some good songs here, uh, like uh, "Come On, Come On," and, and uh, we have uh, "Hit That Perfect Beat." Uh, I really like. But uh, aside from the singles, it was a letdown the entire album, so I have no use for it. This is Samantha Fox, "Just One Night," uh, and uh, this is a very very late Samantha Fox in the 80s. I think it was in the 90s even. I think it's from 91. Let's see, it's from 19 and. Uh, 91 uh, and uh, it is uh, the other Samantha Fox albums are charming and uh, has some really good points but this one was not really good Samantha Fox album Robin Neville the place like this Robin Neville's first album is a masterpiece but the rest albums that he made was pretty boring and uh, there's a single here, Someone Like You, that's pretty good, but and the Back on Holiday is also fantastic good, but I have those one on singles, so I have no use for this one. Stacy Q, Hard Machine, pretty boring. Uh, Stacy Q had made some good singles, but uh, the album is uninteresting. Charlie Barnett, Big Band, 1967. I love Charlie Barnett as a big band leader. It's a forgotten uh, classic big band leader that, that uh, plays all, uh, far too less but this is a very late Charlie Burnett from the late 60s and it, the band is sounds horrible. So, so uh, I prefer the, the Charlie Burnett when it was at its best. And finally, CDs. Not all, just as much as on the vinyl side, but a couple. Uh, this is Swedish Dance uh, Sisters, uh, House Sisters Dajin. Uh, Diane and Jeanette Söderholm in the real name. United Soul Power from 1990 contains a great song that's called Big Bad World but uh, the album itself is really really uninteresting. Unfortunately I had high hopes for this since I liked the Swedish house music in the early 90s. Uh, this is more Swedish music, the Attic, uh, Swedish uh, synth uh, disco band from the early OOS. Uh, I like the song The Arrival that uh, con was a part of uh, the Swedish entry of the Eurovision Song Contest. 
containing vocals by Therese Granqvist. That is a great song that I have on, on the CD single actually, and the album itself is pretty uninteresting, so I have no use for it. Blue System is a side project from Dieter Bohlen from Modern Talking. However, Dieter Bohlen uh, is a horrible singer. He is one of the worst singers ever. <laughs> so, so uh, and the album itself is uh, really, really uninteresting. I, I can't imagine why I kept this one for so long. So, so uh, I, I decided to get rid of it. More U Disco, but uh, this time from a newer date. This is Alexia Fan Club. Containing her big hits, ooh la la la, uh, have some good Euro disco tracks, but the album itself uh, is too m many different styles that I don't like, so I have no use for this one. Marcus and Keith, Andra Sidan, the other side, Swedish uh, duo that was part of a reality soap uh, called Villa Medusa once. Uh, but uh, I thought they made some good music, but now I listen to the album again, I realize that this one was pretty uninteresting. I have no use for it. Uh, Diana King, Shy Guy Girl. Uh, this is the album by, with Shy Guy, but I have the Shy Guy on single. The album itself is pretty uninteresting. Uh, I showed in a previous, uh, in, in my previous vinyl, uh, vinyl CD update that I bought a uh, double CD compilation by AHA and I already have this one the headline deadlines and the hits of AHA and since I have now a compilation that contains even more hits all of their hits from uh, the start to 2011 this one that ends in the nine that was released in 1991 is pretty uninteresting actually so I have no use for it I'd rather put energy on on the bigger compilation and this is a couple of ordinary uh, hit compilations with Euro disco music from 94 short busters from 94 and September 94 uh, I have no use for it uh, this is Ronnie Gardner octet Ronnie Gardner American jazz musician that uh, moved to Sweden uh, my Swedish Hot and uh, uh, uninteresting. I think it was pretty boring jazz actually. Uh, and speaking of boring jazz, this is Lena Jansson, uh, vocalist with a couple of totally unknown musicians. And I can't imagine why I kept this one for so long. I think it's pretty, pretty uninteresting. There is a couple of guys who doesn't like jazz at all. Johnny Hayes Jazz. Uh, Johnny Hayes Jazz first album is fantastic good. Turn Back the Clock is a masterpiece in the 80s pop music. Uh, the follow-up single, Tall Stories, is real failure. Totally uninteresting. And I feel like I don't have use for this one. A compilation, a couple of compilations from the 70s that I... Uh, have no real use for uh, containing some uh, artists that I have no, that really don't like uh, having uh, mud and status quo Nazareth. Uh, unfortunately, we have some Gladys Knight and the Pips here also, but I hope to get find the real albums for these songs. So, so I feel like I have no real use for these compilations. I will not listen to them. And finally, this is a Duke Ellington. Not a real sleeve either, uh, but uh, Duke Ellington. This is a classic jazz compilation, and uh, with the most ordinary songs that I've heard so many times that I'm really sick to death. What I'm uh, take the age train, sophisticated lady, and so on. So I have no use for it. I don't need a uh, Duke Ellington greatest hits. So those are the albums that. Uh, I have decided to remove from the collection. I hope that if you didn't think it was way too long. Uh, however, it will be not much longer now. <laughs> uh, so um, I hope that you enjoyed my walk through uh, the records that I don't need anymore and some explanation why. See this little kind of review of records that in my opinion, you shouldn't buy. <laughs> so uh, until next time, I hope that you have a really nice continuing of the week. And bye-bye. Uh,